In this video, we're going to have a look at using NZ Grapper for the 3.1 physics internal. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get our data into NZ Grapper. The easiest way of doing this is changing this data source here to an empty data set for editing. If you've already got your data saved as a CSV or on an Excel table, you can um, click on data and open a file or um, import from the clipboard if you've copied it, but um, I'm going to show you how to enter it in directly. So we're going to come along and we're going to add three more rows in um, and two more columns. So my first column here is going to be the length, uh, which is the length of my pendulum in meters. And I'm going to have the three time columns because I've um, gone and I've collected my time three times. Um, and I've got uh, my lengths that I've done are 0 0.15 meters, 0 0.2 meters, 0 0.25 meters, 0 0.3 and I'm going to pop in my times. So I've got times of 0.3. Once you've finished typing all of your data in, make sure you hit the Save Changes button. So now I want to come along and get an average time. So I'm going to come into my sample and more here and create a new variable, which is the average of my time one, my time two, and my time three. I'm just going to call that average time brackets for 10, because that's for 10 swings. And then I'm going to come along and I'm going to go sample and more and create new variable linear function, because I want to get that average time just for one swing. So I'm going to divide it by 10. And I'm just going to call that average time. So now that I've got that, I'm going to change my graph type to a scatter graph. My independent variable along my x-axis is going to be my length, and my dependent variable, the one on the y-axis, is going to be the average time. So I'm looking at this graph, and I know from my learning in my physics class that I'm looking for a square root relationship. So I want to square root this length. So I'm going to come into sample and more and create a new variable from a custom function. The variable that I want to square root is the length, and my function is going to be the square root of x. You can type all sorts of different functions in there, but that's the particular one that I'm after here. And then I'm going to press create. So that creates a new column here called square root x, which I'm just going to call the square root of length. And then I'm going to press save changes. Now, whatever your titles are here, so if I change this to square root length, it automatically puts that title down here. So I'm going to come along and give it a title, um, my graph title, and you can make it whatever you want. And your axes need to have units. So the square root of length will be meters to the power of 0 0.5. And your um, time is going to be in seconds. And I'm then going to press update graph to get that to show on the graph. I can then come along and add in a regression line. Now what that does is it takes these axis titles and it puts it into this equation. So if you want that equation to use slightly different numbers in there. You can press this more options button and I can say that instead of x I want it to be I want to change this to length to the power of 0 0.5 and this here is going to be t for time and then press update graph and it's going to nicely show on my graph. The last thing we want to do is have a look at the uncertainty around the data. So we need to add a couple more columns. So I've added columns in here for my horizontal and my vertical uncertainties. Calculating these uncertainties is beyond the scope of this video, so best to have a chat about this to your physics teacher. Once I've got the data in there though, I want to make sure I hit the Save Changes button. Down the bottom here, I can now come in and I can add in my horizontal uncertainty for my horizontal error bars, and I can add in my vertical uncertainty for my vertical error bars. What that does is it adds those crosses on there. The last thing I want to do is plot an uncertainty line. So to do that, I want to come in here and add a custom line. This adds these two points onto here, which I can drag around and put wherever I want, 
and it draws a line between those two points. There are lots of different ways to do this, so again, have a chat to your physics teacher about this. If I come and tick this Show Equation button, it adds the equation here onto the graph. I can then right-click on this graph and click Copy Image and paste it into whatever document I'm working on elsewhere. Thank you.